Go ahead. Hello, class. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, we are super excited to bring you what we've been working on for about a week now. We've had 12 people behind the scenes helping us with this. This we've, is awesome. We believe this is the most important thing for any newbie or any RV newbie that's coming into the space is to learn safety, right? Mm -hmm. How to keep yourself and your family safe. We love the RV lifestyle. We love the RV life, but we made a lot of mistakes in the beginning. Yeah. Mercedes and I have been doing this for two and a half years now. We think we're getting better at it, but we don't ever think we'll be professionals, right? We're oh, professional no. mistake makers. Yeah, we're professional mistake makers first, <laughs> RVers second, which is what makes this class so special because this class is going to save lives. And what we've done, knowing our faults, right? We, we teach more what not to do rather than what to do is that we've brought in industry professionals, experts that know so much about these topics, rather than having us more share about what not to do, they're going to dispel common myths. They're going to give us tips. They're going to show us like, not just what we need to know, but how we can find out the information on our own RV. This, this class is probably the most important class that we've ever done because it's going to help others. It's going to keep your family safe and, and not just for your family, but you'll be able to help others that you see along the road too. Exactly. Remember, if you remember the RV Odd Squad, your job is to be kind, considerate, and always willing to help a fellow RVer along the way, guys. And so that's why we've taken the time and put so much effort into this. And that's why we've in, uh, invited the experts we did today. Now, this could be a four to eight hour class. We're not going to dive that oh, deep no. into the weeds, okay? We don't need engineering degrees. Yeah, <laughs> don't forget the download. We're going to kind of move through this quickly. If you have questions, save them for the end after all the experts have spoken. Or put them in caps and we'll save put, them for later. Put your questions in caps and we'll answer those at the end of the video, okay, guys? So here we go. All right, so we're going to start talking first about the biggest RV danger. And I think this is one that is so, so, so important because we're all guilty of this. And so let's start, start with the biggest RV danger, which is neglecting the basics. And who here cannot relate that, you know, you've done it a hundred times. So you, you don't focus on it. Like, like you, you know, you should, right. It's easy to take things for granted that you've done often and, and to kind of say, well, what's the big deal or, mm -hmm. or, or you start second guessing yourself. Did I forget to do this? Did I remember this? And, and right. maybe you don't have a system, right? The devil's in the details. It is. And so everybody, every RV is a little bit different and everybody's going to create their own checklist of breakdown and setup on your RV while you're doing your breakdown and setup. Never have a conversation with somebody oh, yeah. just kindly say to them, cause they love to come up to you right before, you know, you're setting up or you're oh, ready to take off. They love coming up and talking to you right before you're leaving. Just say, just be very kind. Say, listen, I'm setting up. I really have to focus on this because, yep. you know, we're pulling, you know, eight, 10, 12 tons. Exactly. And, and, and so it's so, so important to focus on the task at hand and don't let anybody disturb you when you're doing that. Yeah. Which leads in perfectly to the next one. Go slow. Don't speed and never ever rush. Remove the concept of <laughs> deadlines and timelines and that sort of thing. It is so much important. It's so much more important to get there in one piece an hour late than, you know, to have issues happen. And you know how it is, guys. Issues compound. So when you're getting that that feeling like, oh, man, this is stressful. Too much is going on. Go slower. There's a phrase in Spanish um, that says, like, go even slower to get there faster. Exactly. Right? Exactly. And so remember, the RV lifestyle is 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 freedom, independence and adventure. Right. We're out mm -hmm. there to have fun. Don't let anybody ever rush you. Go slow. If the speed limit is 65, do 60. Know your rig, right? Stay within your limits. When you get to a park and you're uncomfortable the first few times about parking that big monstrous RV that you just bought, don't worry about anybody else. It, it may, they can wait, yeah, right? Take fine. your time, double check, triple check everything. Mm -hmm. Never, ever rush. Yep. This one, this one is really tricky, right? This is more of those details that you say you'll do later and you never get around to it. Checking and replacing those batteries to the smoke alarms, the carbon monoxide detectors, the propane. Like, this is the one that is so easy to get in trouble because 
you know, at the time the batteries seem really insignificant, but this is really like your first line of protection against really nasty stuff that could hurt you and your family. Exactly. So just always make sure that your protection devices, your CO2, your um, uh, fire detectors, make sure they're always working properly. Test them daily, guys. Yep. All right, now we're gonna go into this one very briefly. If you know, you know. <laughs> if you can count to two, you know what we're saying. Just yeah. Remember that you were your first line of defense, and you know you're gonna be traveling in different areas, and so just keep that in mind. Right, exactly. You may be in secluded areas, but you always a person. You you are responsible for your own safety and your family's safety. Mm -hmm. Um, again, we're not gonna go into the details because this video won't be shown very much on YouTube. So don't put it in but the if comments. you can count to two, if you know, you, you know. know exactly what we're talking about. Okay. Yep. All right, this one, okay, guys, this one. This is a me, big one, one, guys. This one pisses me off, okay? No, <laughs> and here's why. Because when I get a fire extinguisher, like I am trusting, right? And fires are so dangerous in RVs, right? And I'm just assuming that it's built well, right? And, and nobody tells you, like, you hear all this stuff in the news, but nobody tells you, hey, this fire extinguisher has been recalled. Yeah, 40 million fire extinguishers were recalled last year, guys. you got to go ahead. We're going to give you a link. It's with, in the download. It's in the download. So click that link and go ahead and check the specs in your fire extinguisher to make sure you have a properly you know, working fire extinguisher. And that's, that makes me really mad that, you know, you, you don't know, you assume it's working and then you get yourself into trouble. Yep. All right. This Next one is uh, always have a first aid kit, right? A weather radio um, and just be ready for everything, guys. Again, you, your own first line of defense. Help can sometimes be 10, 20, 30, 40 minutes away. Um, you can probably tell by our last video, you always want to be monitoring the weather, guys. Mother Nature changes fast. Um, and so make sure you, you know, one of the things we're looking into now is a CB, a two-way radio system, right? Mm -hmm. But we just got a brand new uh, 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 weather radio, and we're also looking into two-way CB system. Mm -hmm. And just friendly reminder, we are going to get to all of your questions. Please pop them in and we'll get to them at the end because um, I'm already seeing some excellent, excellent questions. If you can remember to put them in caps, that will help, but not necessary. Um, but but yeah. And on a side note, guys, my daughter is doing the moderation today. We are in sunny, beautiful Colorado. We're absolutely having a, a blast here. We're actually right between Nor we're camping between NORAD and Fort Carson. Yeah. And we hear Rebelly every night. Oh, happy, you know, happy Memorial Day, guys. Mm -hmm. um, remember those who died for what we enjoy today. Mm -hmm. Always keep your propane and water topped off. You don't know when you when you could possibly get stuck. Mm -hmm. So be ready for anything. Well, and, and the other piece as far as that goes is make sure those connections are, are well. Um, you know, we've talked in the past about different different products that help you monitor your propane. Um, but just don't mess around with that stuff yeah, or don't forget to turn it off when you're driving. That's a big one. That's yeah. really easy to do. And we're going to talk about a product that will help you do that. Mm -hmm. All right. Now this one, it's not a question of if it's a question of when it's going to happen. You will have a breakdown on the side of the road. I right. mean, you, you just will. So are you ready when that happens? Like, do you have a, what's the tire thing? The crossing? <laughs> a tire iron. Yes. So make sure you have the basic stuff, guys. Most important is just a simple reflective vest. Yeah. We've had police officers across the country, right, who are members of the RV Odd Squad constantly tell us, some people think that domestic violence calls are the most dangerous. They're not. Police officers will tell you, the people that serve us, they will tell you that the most dangerous is when, a, when, a, when getting out of your car on the highway. People don't pay attention. And even if they see you, people tend to drive towards what they're looking at. Mm -hmm. now, if you've ever seen traffic slow down with every accident, everybody's staring at it. Mm -hmm. So just be ready with the basic equipment, tire pressure checker, mm -hmm. you know, and we've got a, we've, we've got a professional we're going to bring on today to share that Which more of that with you. To our next one, actually. Monitor Come on, your people. tires. Come on, people. <laughs> this, everything is literally resting on your tires. Everything is resting on your tires. It's there's more fatalities in the RVing space because tire blowouts, fires, and probably under pressure or overheated tires, guys. You've got to monitor your tires. And so we're gonna share, we're gonna today we've invited Mike from mm -hmm. TST onto the show because mm -hmm. again, we've learned a lot, but we don't know anything, everything. Um, Mike is a professional and he's going to go over some stuff with you right now. Yep. So let's get Mike on. Um, this is going to take us just a minute. Mike, can you hear us? 
I can hear you. All right. Welcome to the show, buddy. And thank you thank for you. Your thank week. you for having us. We, yeah, we, thanks for coming over Memorial Day weekend to spend a few, you know, spend a few minutes with us. Absolutely. All right. Now let's get into his um, his worksheet. This is just going to take a quick second while we get his worksheet on. So give me just a no, 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 no. no. Let okay. me see. Let me help you, sweetheart. Okay, Guys, you. And we told you we're new at this. This will be really good. So we're going to do a share. We're going to share this. Share, share video screen. There you go. There's the window. Because, no, nope, oh, that one. This one. Yep. Perfect. Okay, got it. Share. Yay. All right, we're there. <laughs> All right. And so one of the things that we've asked, because we're not professionals, is it's like, okay, well, if you could, if you could tell everyone that has an RV certain things, what would be those things that you would share? Right. And so we narrowed it down to like, what are things that every RVer needs to know about their tires? And rather than have us like ask, ask the experts and then repeat the information to you, it's like, let's just go directly to, to the people. experts and let them share it. So the first thing that you really need to know, which really surprised me is how old is your tire? So Mike, how do we find this information out? That's a great question. So um, what you're going to do is you're going to look on your actual tires and you're going to see every tire has a DOT number on it. All right. So we've got the DOT number brought up here on the screen and there's a bunch of numbers and letters and we're going to go through them. But the most important things you want to look for are the last four digits, which we'll get to in a minute. So the first two letters on those DOT numbers are the manufacturer plant code. Every single tire manufacturer in the world has a manufacturer plant code. The next number and letter is a government size and ply code. So that tells the government size of the tire and then what ply that tire is. The next four letters are gonna be the manufacturer's construction code. But the most important ones, the last four numbers at the end are the tire build date. So, so important. important, so important. So, so important. So important. It's like December 2019, but it's, it's not. 2019. So 1219 means that tire was manufactured the 12th week of 2019. And it's so important for you guys to, to pay attention and look at that. I get We get calls at TST all the time. People buy new tires and they call us and they say, you know, how do we, how do we tell how old these tires are? They're new, but we want to know how old they are. We tell them to go look at it. And so many times you see that that number is a lot older than it should be. That tire... That, that tire build date should be more than a year to year and a half old, meaning that the tires are pretty new when they're in that dealership. But there's been many places where, you know, maybe they didn't sell tire or didn't sell those tires for a while. And they someone comes in, they need that size tire. So they sell it to them. They're already three or four years old. So just make sure when you buy new tires that that tire build date was in the last year to 18 months. So, you know, that tire is new. Right. And so if it says 4819, that means it was built in the 48th week in 2019. You never want your tires to get too old. When they sit too long, they deteriorate. You can yeah. have big problems. So always check the tire numbers, even if the rig's brand new. Mm. Absolutely. All yeah. right. Next question. Um, the next question is, how do I find out what PSI I should run my tire at? That is such a great question. So every single RV, whether it's a fifth wheel, a travel trailer, toy haul, or motorhome, whatever it is, they're all going to have the little placard that you see right there on the screen. Typically, uh, in the uh, in the fifth wheels are going to be kind of up front, and the travel trailers they could be on the side. Some of the motorhomes are going to be in the panel in the in the doorway. But that's going to tell you what the manufacturer recommends that you fill that tire to um, for your actual unit. So right. if you don't know, look at that placard and check. Now. Obviously, it's also a good practice to go get the, you know, get your RV weighed and weigh it by position, by front left, front right, back left, back right, whatever it is. And then you can go to whatever that tire manufacturer's website is. You can put in, um, you know, the tire size and you can see based off the weight exactly what you should be running. But if you haven't weighed your, your tires, then look at the placard and make sure those tires are filled to that recommended PSI weight. And one other real quick tip, guys, never fill your tires after you've been driving all day. Because the tires are hot. You want to let them cool down and you always want to fill your tires when they're cooler, not when they're really hot. Because PSI obviously expands in the heat and then it, it goes back down when it when it's cooler out. So always right. fill tires when they're pressure. cold pressure. Always fill them with cold, cold pressure. pressure. And I actually believe that this is the most ex the most important sticker on your RV. And guys, I just want to point this out to you. Your RV comes with certain specs and they'll be on this sticker. How much weight it is with its tanks empty 
with yep. no nothing on the, on your rig. But then what a lot of people do is they overfill their rigs, right? Mo the rig, this sticker will tell you how much contents and water and all your tanks fill is going to cost uh, or, or weigh. The important thing is, is that if you overweight it, that's why Mike said you got to get your RV weighed. If you overweight, you would need to definitely get a higher rated tire. Most veterans that have been RVing for long periods of time have told me that when they buy a new RV, they immediately just change the tires. Mm -hmm. And they usually will buy a higher letter level of rating, you know, when they buy the rig. Which actually brings us to our next question, because like, let's say I need to replace the tire. How do I find out the tire rating and the size? Like, how do I, because remember when we had the tire replaced and they gave us the wrong size? Yes, they gave us the wrong size. So we yeah. had like all these different tires on an RV, super dangerous. So how do I find this information? So you can find that on the tire as well too. You'll see the actual tire width, the aspect ratio, the radial and the rim diameter. So you're probably familiar with it. You see like a 295 in this example, 75 R225. So motorhomes, most class A, Motorhomes are going to be run on a 22.5 22 tire. So that's the actual tire size, 22.5. And then you've got the tire width, the aspect ratio, the radial. So you always want to look at that to make sure that you're putting the correct tire size on your RV. Very important. Awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. Next. Um, all right. The next question that people need to know, <laughs> and this is more like a statement, I would say. This is just tires are complicated. They're super complicated. There's a lot to them. All right, is it this one? I already see that. So yeah, you're right, tires are really complicated and there's a myth out there that people think, you know, tires are rubber, some steel, and you know, you, you put air in and put them on the wheels and that's it. Well, look at this slide. Tires are like a cake. I mean, there's so many different ingredients and compounds. And, and when I first started doing this well over a decade, oh, it amazed me to see how many different compounds that it takes to put together and blend together and, and, and to make an actual tire. So we're not gonna go over all these compounds, there's so many guys, but there are lots of different compounds in a tire. They are very complicated and uh, it's, it's just good for you guys to see everything that goes into, into your tires. It's not just rubber and steel. Yeah, and what's funny about RVs, we do all this this uh, investigating the best RV, the right layout, right? But people have a responsibility to really do a deep dive into the weeds of how tires work, special tires, different rated tires, and you really should be you really should know exactly the right tires that should be on your rig. And I gotta tell you, Mike, we'll we'll get to questions later, but we are getting so many fantastic questions on of tires. Course. So I'm really excited because we're it's like we're just scratching the surface, you know. Well, I'm going to stick around afterwards. So if there's any questions, I'll be around and I'd be happy to answer any questions once uh, once we're done with these presentations. That's Appreciate fantastic. that, Mike. Thank you. All right. So the next thing you need to know: How fast can you go? Because <laughs> our truck, for example, our truck can haul that fifth wheel, and it feels like eighty feels like butter. Yeah. When we first bought our rig, my GMC 3500, literally, I couldn't feel the rig on the back when I was pulling that thing. And so we caught ourselves literally doing up to 75, 80 miles an hour by accident. Once yeah. we realized it, yeah. I immediately slowed down. But the best rule of thumb is again, be patient and go slow. Yeah. Um, even if your tires are rated for 65, definitely don't go over 65, but we <laughs> yeah. suggest stay under yeah. just Absolutely. to be safe. You're pulling so much weight. Absolutely. And, and this index right here, the speed symbol and load index, you can see what your tire size is, but it'll tell you exactly, you know, what your tire is rated for, what speed you can go to. And don't, if it says, you know, 70 miles an hour, don't go 70, you know, like you said, go a little bit under, go 65. You can't be in a hurry when you're RV and you're pulling so much weight. It's so dangerous, um, you know, to, to speed in and, and go over a speed that your tires are rated for. So pay attention to that. This will be up. I'm sure you'll make this available to all your people, but it's really, really important that they they know what their uh, their speed symbols are and their load indexes are. And nothing drives me more crazy when I see somebody pulling a big 40 foot fifth wheel drive by me at 85, 90 miles an hour. Crazy. You know, they're just putting so many people in danger. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so the next one. This is a bonus tip for newbies. <laughs> this is such a newbie move, and it's. Don't forget the spare. And frankly, I had never even, never even crossed my mind. I was just proud that I had a spare, right? Tell us more about how we can remember the spare. So it's such an important thing, guys. And I'll give you a quick story. So many people call us and they, you know, they, they run the TST system and they love it. And they get alerted to a problem and they get pulled over on the side of the road, which you get pulled over on the side of the road with a tire issue. It's already a stressful situation. Cars are zinging by back and forth. It's so, so dangerous. So, you know, they get out. 
the wife's freaking out. He's, you know, at the RV trying to jack it up and get your tire iron, as you, you said earlier, Mercedes, and get that tire off. And then he crawls up underneath to grab the spare tire and gets that and goes and puts it on and, you know, puts the lugs and does all that. And then guess what? He realizes that that tire doesn't have any air in it or is very, very low because spare tires are out of sight, out of mind. No one ever thinks to crawl under there, shimmy up under there and check that spare tire. So at TST, we came up with a great product called Spare Air. You see a picture of it right there. It very easily connects right to the valve stem on the spare tire. We have our patented hose, and then it mounts on the edge of the frame, either the back or the side, wherever you know, wherever your RV spare tire is located. And it gives you a port where you can actually check that spare tire. So that should be part of your, before you leave, part of your checklist. Know what's in your spare tire. There's nothing worse than having a problem and then realizing the spare tire is no air. So you go ahead, get the spare air, put it on. You can also put a sensor right on the end of that spare air. And now you've got that in the display in your truck or your, you know, in the cockpit of your motorhome or whatever it is, but you're going to know exactly what's going on with that spare tire. Guys, it's so important. So many people don't realize this. And when you're stuck on the side of the road, there's cars zinging by. It's a stressful situation. The last thing you want to do is have to go figure out where your compressor is to get that tire up to up to where it should be. So spare air is a lifesaver. I can't can't stress to you enough. It's so important. Yeah, we absolutely love the product. And when we first saw this product, when you guys first come out with this, I was like, hmm, it, you know, did, well, what's the point? But within six months, Mercedes and I had two flat tires. We've never had a problem. We've been blessed. We've never had big problems with our RV, but we have been stuck on the, the road now, now at this point, three different times. Yeah. You guys know when you're in your luggage area where your tire is, it's usually packed with stuff. So much you'll stuff. drive by somebody in the highway and you'll see all this stuff on wow. the side. Yeah. And, and so with the spare air, you can connect it to where, you, where, where the tire is, not only in your luggage bay with all stuff around it, but yeah. up underneath your truck. I've literally had to go under my truck before to, to, to put air in the tire because it was low. Yeah. Yeah. And so I just think it's a phenomenal product. I literally can, you know, we, we monitor our spare with the TST with an extra sensor. And so we always know what the pressure is and it, it shows up for us, you know, and if it's low, yep. I just basically walk up. I put the end of that right next to my bay outside. So all I do is hit that easy with air, access. easy, Perfect. easy access. Same thing with the truck. It runs out by my bumper. So I don't have to climb up to, to put air in. So absolutely. Yeah. And, yeah. And, oh, go go ahead. Ahead. I was just say, and on the spare tire, I mean, we have great flow through sensors that you can put right on the end of that spare air. So you can just put the air hose right on that spare air fill it as needed and it's going to display or it's going to show what your pressure is on your display it makes it real real simple you're not having to worry about unscrewing a sensor to put air and put the sensor back on just put the hose right onto the uh the end of the flow through sensor and you know exactly what's going on well and now's probably a good time so um we do have a discount code we put it in the comments we'll link to it um if you use code rboc15 you get 15 percent off you're not obligated to use our codes um, or, or anything, but we do ask that that you do. If yeah, you're gonna please. Get, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, the bottom line is we just want you to, to have the protection and, and to monitor your tires while you're driving. And and for us, we're very selective about who we work with. And one of the reasons is that we decided to really partner with TST and, and this is something that's long overdue, but tell us a little bit about your partnerships with manufacturers, because this is a this is a game changer. So 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 great segue into that. So TST, and there's a there's a lot of different tire pressure monitoring systems out there. I'm sure you all have seen, but TST is the only tire pressure monitoring system that's been approved with Forest River and Thor to be used on every line, every RV they make, they've approved TST to be used on. And we're actually Coming, uh, coming standard from the factory on more and more lines every few months. So you're starting to see more and more. Some of you on the call probably have bought a new RV or a new travel trailer or fifth wheel or what have you that TST comes standard with already. So yep. if that's the case and they don't have a sensor in the spare, you can get the spare air, you can add a sensor because the, the units in the that, that come standard from the factory, they use our internal banded sensor. So it's awesome. awesome. But all of our sensors work together, which is great. So it's so easy. You can just go buy, you know, an extra couple of sensors, put one for the spare tire. Maybe some people want to put it on their truck because even though we know it's mandated by NTSB back in 2007 that every passenger car and light truck has to have a, a sensor inside the tire, right? Um, 
But with, with that being said, you know, you have on your dash and if a tire gets certain low, it might pop up or give you the little universal TPMS signal. So we run on a different frequency. So you can actually put sensors on your truck tire too. And people like that because they can see exactly what's going on with not only the, the pressure, but the temperature as well too. And temperature, as you guys know, is so important to monitor. We pick up on things from temperature, hanging brake calipers, bearings, you know, anything that causes that tire to heat up abnormally, we're going to let you know and give you an alarm. So before, because you're driving down the road, you have no idea what the temperature is. Now, maybe you stop and get gas and you've got a little IR gun and you look and see, but when you're driving down the road, something goes wrong, you don't know. And next thing you know, you hear the boom and the tire fails and starts throwing rubber. And, and, and not only the tire, but it rips your wheel well. It damages the RV in seconds at 50 miles an hour. You can do thousands of dollars worth of damage to that RV. So monitoring the, the temperature and pressure is so important. And, and I'm, I'm glad you guys got brought that up. Yeah, we, we really, truly love TST. We were using the tire minder for our first year, and it worked. The tire minder worked for us. But the difference between the tire minder and the TST, once we had met you at the about a year and a half ago in yeah. the TV show, I mean, we the difference was just night and day. And, and we, we immediately fell in love with the TST, and it's also saved our butt three times now. Yeah. So we know how important it is. Three times our TST has warned us that we've been in trouble. One time we had a slow leak. One time we had super, super fast leak. And it tells you exactly what's going to happen. So, Mike, we want to thank you for taking your Memorial Day weekend to give oh, the wow. RV Squad a presentation, share your information with us. We yeah. do the best we can, but we always miss something. Yeah. yeah. Well, we want to thank you guys. I mean, no one in the industry does something like this. And we're, we're so happy to to be partners with you guys in this and be able to to, to share information that we have as, as industry professionals and, and let people know because so much of this stuff people don't realize and it's so, so important. So thank you for letting us be part of this. And uh, I wouldn't want to do anything else on Memorial Day weekend than uh, hang out with you guys and do a class. So we're good. Liar, liar, pants on fire. But we appreciate you well, coming. And stick around. we got some questions. Yeah, and thanks for sticking I'll around. There. Absolutely. All right, Thank we'll you. see you later, Mike. Take care, guys. Thank you. All right. All right and so. then let's go to just us. Perfect. Okay, guys, that was so much. And don't worry, Mackenzie has been capturing like all your questions. I have a whole list of them, really awesome questions that we're going to get to after this. Um, and so we just wanted to let him kind of share his his piece first before we, we got the questions. And we have not just one industry expert, we have more. Right, and we have more. So we wanted to kind of keep this moving. But again, questions and caps, they're fantastic. We're so excited. And, and guys, heads up, please, if you remember the RV Odd Squad, you know to watch our videos beginning to end. But could you please give us a thumbs oh, up yeah, that would help on us. this video? It helps get this out to more newbies, right, mm -hmm. that are just thinking about coming into the RV lifestyle, the, whether they're part-time or full-time, please give the video a thumbs up. It'll help the YouTube algorithm share this to more people. Mm -hmm. This video was designed with all of you in mind to yes. help the newbie understand the most dangerous things about our being. And so from here, we're going to transition to the next important thing. Which we have personal experience with this one. We have a, a lot Good. of personal experience with this one. You guys know when you buy an RV, they come with like a little blue water filter. Mm -hmm. And we were told to go ahead and buy... The um, hose, the hose filter. So I assume we had double protection, oh, yeah, right? We're so smart. We had it on the RV. Come to find out the filters on thing, these things do about 500 oh. microns. And after about nine months of RVing all around the country, uh, Mercedes and I sync started to turn a different color. We were getting these Our different tub was uh, turning different colors. Uh, Sometimes the dog would not drink the water. And he eats anything skibbly okay. anything man but he would get and he wouldn't drink water right and oh. we found it when we we're in california we, we we started doing the research but what what tipped us off was that but then god works in strange and mysterious ways guys yep. because then we started getting um we got an email from an rv odd squad member who, who ended up in the hospital for two weeks simply by brushing her teeth. She got a waterborne illness. And she ended up in the emergency room for two weeks. She got so, so sick. Yep. So then all of a sudden, all that came together. Mercedes and I started diving into the research and we became disgusted um, at campgrounds all over the country, dilapidated, you know, plumbing under the ground. Um, if you're in a campground that shuts its power, you know, shuts its lines down seasonally, they don't properly flush that out. And so, you really, I, some people will say this isn't as important as we we will, but you know, our, our daughter drinks this water. Yeah. We shower in this water. We brush our teeth with this water. And ultimately we realized after doing research how nasty the water was. And we knew it was our responsibility that if we weren't properly filtering our water, we, we were, were the, the filter. Filters. 
And that's what drove us absolutely insane. Um, especially our daughter, it really hit my heart. So you guys may remember, we did a video about water filters and this was two, almost two, well, well 18 months ago. Yeah. And we tried three different products that we liked, right? We're still newbies. And at this point, we are so, you guys know, we don't talk a lot about, about a lot of products So we talk about the products that we know is a great product. They have great company, you know, uh, customer service and that they'll take care of our members if they ever have a problem. And this is when we found clear source. And, and there's a lot to it, but I'd first like to talk about the myths because in just like a 10 minute conversation with these people, we, we thought we were smart <laughs> and we're not. And there's so much bad information out there about, about water. water. So we're going to, we're going to switch this up and, and we're going to talk about the myths of RV water, really educating you so you can protect yourself and your family because there's so much bad information out there. Okay, so, so I'm going to try to share a new screen. Clear source. So share a screen. We're going to go here. No, no, we just need to add him. We're yeah, just, I know, but we don't. No, we're not doing I, that. Okay, all yep. right. We're going to add him to this. All right. <laughs> hey, Stuart. Hi, here. Howdy. How are you? Thank doing you. great. Thanks yeah. for having us. Yeah, thanks for taking the time on Memorial Day weekend. Yeah, uh, for our pleasure. Uh, helping us understand water filtration. So I think we should just dive into it and, and a lot of myths out there because see, I thought that I could test my water. Um, there's these tests called TDS tests. And I thought that would tell me if I had clean water. So can you tell me why that's a lie that a low TDS water does not necessarily mean that your water is good to drink? And the, re the reason why was, that's a great question is one of the first things we did was we went to Home Depot and we yeah. got a test. Yeah. Right. And, and, and they said the water's fine. And yet our sink was red the and dog our, won't drink the it. dog won't drink it. So what does TD TDS mean? That's a great question. So TDS is total dissolved solids. It's the amount of minerals in your water. That's all it is. It doesn't tell you if there are uh, other, it doesn't tell you if there are contaminants like E. coli or cholera. It doesn't tell you if there's lead or cis. pesticides or cysts. It doesn't tell you what's in the water that might hurt you. It only tells you the mineral content. So, um, it, and it really doesn't have, it, the only effect that a high mineral content has on your water, uh, a high TDS reading is it will leave deposits those white calcium deposits, it'll leave yeah. those on, on your sink. And the way to resolve that is with a softener. Um, but it does not tell you if your water is uh, safe in it. Um, so you can have a very low TDS reading and be drinking Ebola soup. You just yeah. wouldn't know. Yeah. Um, so it's it doesn't really help to test with a TDS strip. Okay. That's, wow. that's the bottom line. All right. Okay. So thank you. Sorry, yeah. everyone. Sorry, watching. guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what's, you know, you know. Yeah. All right. So the next question that I have is going to be on the filter sizes because you see, there's so many filters out there. And I really thought that like 0.5 was enough that it would take care of everything. So can you tell me a little bit more about that? You bet. So um, most filters, not all, but most filters work like a spaghetti strainer. And so uh, in a spaghetti strainer, the water goes through, but the spaghetti stays behind. Um, right. And filters work the same way. The water goes through, but the contaminants stay behind. But contaminants come in different sizes. Um, and even within the same species, so let's take E. coli, for example, it's a species and there's variation. You can have a Danny DeVito or a Shaquille O'Neal. And um, so some versions of that uh, can be quite small. Um, so let's start first with, you were talking about that blue inline tube filter that, are, that you see everywhere. Those typically run anywhere from 50 to 100 microns, um, which is not going to help you filter out anything. Um, a good two canister filter system will frequently finish with a half micron. Now that's very good filtration. It is good. Um, there is a class of contaminants that lives between 0.2 and 0.5. So two tenths of a micron and five tenths of a micron. Um, and it's important to capture that stuff. And so, uh, for example, on our two canister system, we have uh, the clear source premier finishes with a hospital grade 0.2 micron absolute rating filter. And what all that mumbo jumbo means, absolute means every single pore on that filter is the rated size or smaller, so, or better. Um, all other filters are rated nominally, which means, yeah, most of them are that size. 
holidays or something. Right, right. Okay, so some stuff can get through. So hospital grade it makes me feel safe. And it's also, it makes me wonder, probably the stuff that's worse for you is probably smaller. Right. You know, it's probably safer to drink. Excellent more. point. That, that's, strangely, that's the case. So that the smaller the thing, generally the worse it is for you. Um, and there's a lot of nasty stuff. You, your friend that got sick or your viewer that got sick, that's... Um, um, it could be a, a, a bunch of things, but E. coli is a likely suspect. Uh, right. That's something that is very small, and um, that's what typically makes Mexican water so bad. Mexican water is famously unhealthy uh, and gets people sick, and that's usually E. coli. So interesting. Oh and you don't know. I mean, it's 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 a roulette wheel. You could go to a park and be drinking very nice water, and that's the whole point, right? You, you, but don't, you don't know. You don't know until you actually find yourself sick or hear a friend get sick. Correct. And so one of the reasons we picked you in the first place was only we bought your two canister. That was the very first one we yeah. tried out. And it was because I think it was a 0.05. Right. right. And at that right. time, it was it was one of the leaders in the market. And then a year later, you went to the three canister, which actually did something else. Yes. And then now this year, we were super fired up when we saw you guys have busted this down to 0 0.02, which nobody does. That's a that's a game changer. And we're going to yeah. share something at the end of this after we talk to him that is going to show you guys how good the system is. Yeah, but I think that leads perfectly to the third myth, which is that campground water is safe because I see the word potable. I see the word potable, and I think that my best interests are, you know, being kept in mind here. And it's that's not necessarily true. And the other thing is that as an RVer, I mean, I have to right right here. We have hard water over there. The water is like more calcium over here. The water has. So tell me about what we have to look for as in our beer. Well, again, um, it's a roulette wheel. Some parks are going to have perfectly good water. They're feeding off a well-maintained municipal system and the water is going to be just fine. Oh. Um, the difference between getting your water at an RV park and, and the water that you have at home is at home. Um, you get to know your water. You can actually read a water report if you're into that, right. or you can just notice that your neighbors aren't falling over dead and you know, that the, the water's probably fine. Right. Yep. But in an RV park, you don't, you don't know. It might be a municipal yep. system, but it might be well water. Right. Right. Well water can be terrific or well water can be uh, quite bad and have yep. contaminants in it. Not just organic contaminants like we've been talking about, but also metals, pesticides, all just, Lots of stuff. Yeah. So it's a roulette wheel. You don't know. And uh, it's better not to trust your water. It's better. Yeah. To and, and that's one of the things we found when we started doing our research in a water companies all over the country is, is that when you live in one spot, it's easy to design a filtration system because you know what's in that water. Excellent that point. Water. But yours basically has to kind of, an RVer has to kind of account for water, different types of water all over the country. Yeah. And we think ClearSource has the best, the best solution for that. Yeah. Well, thank you brings us to the next thing. And I think this is where people get into so much trouble because the myth, I really thought that filters were only about contaminants and it turns out they, they can serve other purposes, which is kind of why we get tricked, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That's so that's a great. Um, so now we move on this question. We're moving out of like what's bad for you or what's dangerous to can you enjoy your water and a good filter system will not just remove contaminants, but it will actually improve the taste uh, and the smell of the water. Um, at ClearSource, every one of our systems has at least one filter that uses coconut shell carbon block. And coconut shell carbon block does a, a fantastic job of improving the taste and the, and the smell of the water. So when you're looking at a filter system, um, you wanna check for that uh, to make sure it's using that technology so that the water is not only safe, but great tasting. That makes, that makes sense. And then I think the last myth, it really, really bothered me to look at this um, because obviously keeping our family safe is the most important thing. And with everything that has gone on, you know, I would assume that I am protecting my family against germs and viruses and those those other nasty things, too. And tell me why this is a myth. <laughs> um, OK, so we were talking about the size of, of contaminants. Um, and again, this is measured in microns and most of the contaminant, bacteria, cysts, giardia, things like that, somewhere between 0.2 and 0.5 microns. Viruses are, are significantly smaller than that. We're talking thousands of a micron. So they're very small. You could build a 
a filter with pores that were small enough to block a virus, but it would be a brick. So the virus wouldn't get through, but neither would the water. But you wouldn't need a pressure regulator, so, right? right? Exactly. <laughs> um, or anything, because you would have no water. Okay, so NASA had this problem. NASA needed to figure out how to, to get rid of not just bacteria and other things, but, but viruses. And so they um, had this technology developed. So the way our virus guard filter works um, is it has a, a coating on it that is charged electrically. And that captures the, the uh, it has the opposite charge of the viruses uh, and it attracts them and it just holds onto them. It's a virus magnet. Yes. Uh, the great thing about it is it actually flows very well. It doesn't flow like a very tight filter. It flows like an open filter, but captures even the smallest of contaminants. Um, and in this environment, you know, we're, we're obviously all, uh, our, our lives have changed because of a virus and, um, we're the only filter system on the market that, that, that filters them. So it's, uh, it's an important thing to think about when you are making your selection of a water filter system. Yeah. That's, that's so crazy to me. I think between the point, is it point two microns and then the virus guard technology, I think that's where most the best solution available. There's it, there's no better solution for RV is right at this point. Yeah. At this point. And I think right. that, that goes a long way. I mean, because the last thing you want to think what RVing is supposed to be about fun and family and, and memories that last a lifetime. And there's a dangerous aspect to it. And the sad thing about water is, is that the stuff that you drink today may not show up for 10 or 12 or 13 years. And that's what scares me. Oh, you know, yeah. what you, you know, you, you, when you're a filter, it may, maybe not get sick. Like the, our, like the RV like squad you member did, she, you, you know, brush sick. her teeth and she's in the hospital yeah. for two weeks. It's the other stuff that we drink that we won't really know that, what happened in 10 or 12 years. You know, it's a great point. You're, the um, naturally occurring contaminants, you, you'll feel rel relatively quickly. You know, if it's E. coli or something, you'll, you'll get sick. But if there's lead in the water or pesticides, yeah. that's a longer, you're right. Um, I mean, there's people in Flint, Michigan are going to be seeing those after effects for not just decades, but generations. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's bad. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, you know, again, we don't want to fear monger here. They're, they're, you can go to a lot of RV parks and, and have just clean water, clean yeah. water. Yeah. It's rolling. But because the you're traveling around and, and you're going from one place to the next and you don't know where they're getting the water or how good their sanitation practices are. It's just yep. uh, taking a little bit of a chance if you don't treat it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. This is really good stuff. And everyone, we do have a discount code with clear source. Mm -hmm. um, so make sure you use that. Uh, Mackenzie put it in um, the, the, the comments already yep. and if you've downloaded the the worksheet you have all the stuff you need to there to save money um again you're not obligated to use our links do yeah. what's best but for but just get family. water safety for your family Don't guys a filter. it's so important the two most important things the two most most important things we think for safety mm -hmm. are being now being two a year you know two plus years in mm -hmm. is your tires right um and water believe yeah. it or not most you some people water. would tell you yeah you are the filter when you're not filtering your water and <laughs> I'm, add one more thing. I'm gonna take that one by the way i like that you are the filter exactly um and i just want to share one more quick thing and we'll let you go we really appreciate your time this weekend yeah. Some questions, no pressure if you can stick around. If not, that's totally fine. It's completely up to you. Yeah, we don't want to hold you up the weekend. But I want to share something with, with everybody. Now, if you watch our water filtration videos, you'll notice that we suggest a Berkey, right, for drinking water. And then we also suggest the clear source. Those are the two. And we, we use both of those. But here's something we noticed after uh, RVing for 18 months. We noticed um, from Berkey and from visiting, uh, watching other videos that the Berkey needs to be cleaned every two or three months, right? And we noticed after a year, we didn't have to clean it. They said that it would start to clog up. And it hasn't. And it hasn't. So we went in to clean it at 18 months just there to look at it. There's nothing on it. There's nothing on it. And we never considered that the, the clear source is taking all the water that comes into the RV and already cleaning it. So if you want your Berkey, if you love Berkey and you want it to last forever without having to clean it, get the clear source. Because yeah. the clear source, I'll tell you, and there's some other stuff going on with Berkey. And we're not saying anything bad about Berkey. No, no, no. We love our Berkey. We've helped sell a lot of them. We're, that's how we make most of our money is by, by the RV Odd Squad buying our affiliate links, yeah, right? Yeah. That's how we make money. We don't do sponsorships. We don't do Patreon. Um, but uh, I think it's super, super important that everybody understands tires, 
in water safety. And actually, uh, there's one question here that I just have to move up because they're asking, is there any portable filter that I can use for my camper? And I almost forgot another thing that separates clear source from other companies right now. The Nomad. Can you tell me? Uh, thank you. Oh, okay. the Nomad. Um, right. So uh, we noticed that there's a, a, um, a strong demand now uh, um, for people that want the off grid experience. Um, so uh, if you are in an RV and you go to a spot that doesn't have any improvements, that's boondocking. Um, and then overlanding is uh, sort of like backpacking on wheels. You take your, your truck or your Jeep to a spot and you hang out for a while, then you move. Okay, so we noticed that. And um, because you don't can't hook up to water at these places, we, uh, we engineered the Nomad. So the Nomad has an integrated pump and filter. It's in a compact case with carrying handles. Uh, not, not a case, a chassis, compact chassis with handles. And it works off a 12-volt supply of, uh, of energy. So any... Uh, battery will do. We actually any... source these small you... lead acid 12 volt batteries you can get on Amazon. It's terrific. You can draw water from a lake or a stream and filter it to the levels that we've been talking about. Which is absolutely amazing. And, and you know, the RV Osco members know I'm a prepper. And I think that's one of the reasons why that yeah. product is doing so well. Yeah. I mean, things are uncertain in, in everything right now. And people want to be able to be self-sustaining and take care of themselves, not knowing what's going to happen tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So that we're, we're super excited to, uh, to to play with the Nomad. And we'll, we will be doing a review by itself on the right. Nomad, you guys. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a game changer. Yeah. It's a game changer. We're super excited about it. Look for that video in the next month or so. Awesome. awesome. So should we start, we have, um, Kenzie has organized the tire questions and then okay. she's organized the water questions. So do you want to, how do we want to do this? Do we put them all on screen? Do you have time to take some questions? Of course. Okay. Fantastic. So let's fantastic. Put, let's, let's. So we're going to go to the tire questions first. So we're going to go back to Mike. We're going to um, say bye to Stuart for now, okay. not forever, but just for <laughs> now. And then um, here are the questions that Kenzie has put. We're going to start with the oldest first and go up. Um, so I have a, a TPMS system, but how do I fix it when it's not registering or the monitor? So generally speaking, when you have to troubleshoot your TPMS, what would you recommend? So there's a few things. First of all, every system we sell comes with a signal booster repeater. Yeah. Very, very important. There's so many people that think they don't need it and they don't use it or whatever, but that fully optimizes your system. You need to use that repeater. There's so much interference in that space right now. So that's one of the first things. If it, the sensor is not reported to the display, do you have your repeater hooked up? Okay. So if you don't hook the repeater up, shouldn't have many issues at all. Second of all, maybe the, the battery has failed in the sensor. The, the sensors have user replaceable batteries. They're a, a, a CR2032 on our newer systems and some of our older systems, they're a CR1632 and they last about a year and a half-ish roughly. So, um, you know, check the batteries. If it's been close to a year and a half, and that battery that battery life can, can, can be affected a little bit. If you live up in Alaska in the north and it's 30 below zero half the year, then that might cut down your battery life a little bit. Or if you're in Death Valley and, and it's 130 degrees, you know, for many you know, long periods of time, that could affect your battery life too. But in general, they should last about a year and a half. So check the battery. Um, and if uh, that's not that's it, you know, just call customer service. You yeah. guys have fantastic. Yeah. Call our customer service line. Um, 770-889-9102. Um, visit us on the website. You can ask questions there. We've got an info box. Uh, we're available Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern, Saturday, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, we're always there, and everyone on our customer service line are actually our viewers themselves. They yes. understand the system. They've been with us for a while. They speak your language, guys. Um, so just call us. We're always available. We're always available to help. All right. Awesome. awesome. We're going to get one more question. Oh, well, actually, yeah. We're not going to go on okay. forever. Well, let me, I have like three more because a lot okay. of people are asking the same questions and they're That's all going to do the same thing. And you can always send me later too. If you get more coming in, send them to yeah. me. We'll answer them, get it back to you. You can put them yeah. up on Twitter. Actually, if you can go and run through the comment section, after Mike, words. after we're done and answer the questions, that would be no, fantastic. No, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Ron, for that question. The next one, um, we're getting a lot of questions about the, the nitrous um, in the tire versus- Thank you, yeah. So um, what is your quick two cents on that? So um, you'll see some of the manufacturers now use nitrogen rather than air. Um, some of the tire manufacturers, excuse me. So um, so nitrogen has bigger molecules. 
Um, so, you know, tires are naturally porous, right? So if you don't drive your car, your RV for three or four or five, six months, you're going to lose a few pounds of air, not because there's a problem with the tire, just because they're naturally porous, right? So the thought behind that is nitrogen has bigger molecules, which makes it harder for the air to escape. It also has some other benefits. It keeps your temperature a lot more stable. Um, so, but on the other hand, like, as we're breathing right now, we're breathing in about 72 or 74% nitrogen. Yep. So... You know, and, and people get caught up on that too, or they have nitrogen in their tires and they're in the middle of somewhere RV in and they can't find nitrogen because it's not available everywhere right now, right? So they're like, they'll call us and be like, oh, our tire's low, but we can't find nitrogen. What do we do? Well, go ahead and put regular air in it. You're, it's not going to hurt anything. I mean, put regular air in it, keep those tires properly inflated. So if you can't find nitrogen, put air in them, you can mix it, it's fine. Um, but yeah, that's 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 some of the benefits of nitrogen, the bigger molecules, which keeps that you know naturally porous tire from, from losing air. Yeah. Um, and, and there's so many arguments for and against. I'll tell you my own personal experience. Nitrogen has lasted longer before mm -hmm. I need to add air. Yeah. Um, that's just a personal experience. I appreciate you answering that because we had at least three or four people ask around the same question. Yeah. Um, and then the other big one that we're, we're getting questions about is about when you say cold pressure, like how cold is cold? <laughs> so, okay, that's a good question there. So cold pressure. So ideally, you know, when you fill your tires, like I said earlier, you never fill your tires when they're hot. You really don't want to fill your tires when it's, you know, 10 below zero either. So ideally, the, the ideal temperature to fill your tires is between 68 and 72 degrees. Obviously, that's not doable in many different, you know, situations, especially in the summer or, or whatever. So um, you just, you want to fill your tires when the tires are cold or close to ambient air temperature. But if it's really, 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 really cold, you know, you know, you want to fill the tires. You want to be at the correct PSI. But you'll notice if you fill them when they're when it's really cold out, say say it's 20 degrees out, and you fill your tires to 80 psi, is what they call for. And then you start driving. You get into a warmer climate. At the end of the day, when those tires cool back down, you're going to see you're probably going to have a little bit more psi in them because psi condenses in the cold, expands in the heat, right? So you know there's a formula for every 10 degrees cooler from 68 to 72. You know you could see a one and a half to two two psi if you're filling your tires. It's really cold. You could fill them one and a half to two psi side less for every 10 degrees it's cooler and that's going to get you close but it's you know it's not going to be exact so um right. try to fill your tires just never fill your tires when they're warm that's a big thing and if it's really really cold you know use that formula and see where it's at when you get to a warmer area you'll see what your tires do when they cool back down and if they're still a little bit low then, then top them off or if they're a little bit high you can let a little bit out but but that's yep. the general general uh general answer there Yep. And I that's why that. we love TST. Just monitor them. You don't have to get out of the truck and check every time. Exactly. And then exactly. Vanco Nomad asks, should I buy a TPMS on my leisure travel van? And I think we forgot to mention this, that multi-vehicles, that it's not just a monitoring one vehicle when it comes to TST. Yeah. Our one module actually monitors uh, the Jeep. It monitors the truck. It mm -hmm. monitors uh, the GG no, mobile right. that we had, the class yeah. C. Yes. And, and what was really cool about that, those are three different types of sensors that our, that our, our monitor would do. So we had the, you know, the, um, the yeah. best ones around mm -hmm. the side of the rim, and then we had the flow throughs, and then we also have the, the other type of sensors. That's so so, so, so what, 129 tires you can monitor? Was something yeah, cool. yeah, including spares, 150 tires, including spares. But the cool thing about TST is we can monitor – you know, your, your towing vehicle, let's say you're a motorhome or you're pulling with a truck like you guys do, you can monitor your towing vehicle and up to oh. four trailers. So there's many of your, I know many of your uh, your audience, you know, yeah, there are RVers, but maybe they have a boat in the summertime, they go out in the lake or what have you, um, or they have toys, they have a fifth wheel or a toy hauler and they have side-by-sides or ATVs or stuff like that. So you can monitor all those different things. And with TST, like you said, all of our sensors work together. So when you have the Gigi Mobile, you have the internal sensors banded around the wheels. Those are great, right? Um, but maybe you're pulling your Jeep. I think you have the external cap sensors. Um, we have flow through sensors. We also have a, a, a hybrid sensor designed for marine use that's fully approved for use in salt water and fresh water. Yeah, awesome. Um, one thing, guys, everyone hears the flow through sensor. They're like, oh, we love those sensors. They're great. And they are a great sensor, but you have to have a metal valve stem. They're a little bit heavier, a little bit longer. Think about centrifugal force when you're going down the road at 55, 60 miles an hour. You know, you want to make sure with those flow through sensors, you have a metal valve stem. Now, our RV cap sensors, and our most popular kit, by the way, is our four sensor RV cap sensor kit, right? Um, a lot of people have, have, have trailers or fifth wheels or toy haulers, four tires on their on their units. So um, those can be run, 
those cap sensors can be run on rubber or metal valve stems. Yes. So they're fully approved for rubber use um, as well as metal use. Uh, and at the end of the day, people say, well, what's better? Well, of course, at the end of the day, I mean, if you have a metal valve stem, metal is going to be better than rubber. Rubber can get dry, rotted, cracked after a while. All kinds of different things can happen to it where metal is going to be more of a, a stable, secure thing. But there's nothing wrong with the rubber valve stem. Just make sure if you're putting the TST system on, you know, check your valve stems. Make sure your tires aren't, you know, old and they've been dry, rotted, or cracked from being exposed to the sun and everything else. So just take a look at it. Make sure visually it looks all right. If they look damaged or look like they have a problem, then, you know, change your valve stems and, awesome. and, and then put them on. But, um, yeah, keep that in mind. The, the RE cap sensors, rubber or metal. The flow-throughs must be metal. The hybrids can be rubber or metal. And then the internals are obviously inside banded around the wheel. This is All exciting. Right. That's stuff. good stuff. So again, uh, Mike, thanks for coming out today. Yeah. Spending your Saturday on a holiday weekend, oh love it, love it. Us and and and, and educating on a, us on this stuff. Have an awesome weekend, and we'll talk yeah. to you next week. Yeah. Excellent. Take care, guys. Have a good holiday, everybody. Thank you. You too. All right. Now we're going to talk about the water question. Go back to Stuart now, and you, both these guys. They're they're awesome. Thank yeah. you so much. Hey, Stuart, we're back, man. Um, we don't want to take up too much more of your time. We're going to give you a few questions. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, we can get an answer. Yeah, yeah. So we got a lot of questions um, asking uh, one question in particular about your different products. Um, you know, do you have an inline uh, portable water filter for the casual RVer, or what would you recommend like for the casual RVer? What would you recommend for the <laughs> non full timer? Well, yeah, great question. Um, so we don't have an inline model because they. Uh, the, um, It'd have to be huge. <laughs> yes, it would. Um, so our two canister uh, system, which we now call the Premier, it's uh, lightweight, it's compact, it's easily portable. You guys started with it, and that's a great system. We did not engineer our systems just for the full timer, not at all. Uh, yep. We engineered our systems for every RVer, and that'd be a great system for folks who go out a couple times a year. Yeah. And some people use this at their home or a small cottage, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah. Cause we're getting a lot of questions. Like what about for a small travel trailer? If I don't have a lot of space, you know what I mean? So they don't so, take yeah. up much space guys. And one of the cool things about these is they're designed. The frame that holds them is designed to mount right inside your carrying or luggage bay um, so that you don't have to keep on pulling it in and out of the RV. That's a good option. It's yeah. They've got mounting brackets that are included in it. Yeah. Well, I have another question. We're getting, uh, you know, again, similar questions that can kind of be grouped into the same one. Yeah. As far as how long does the 0.2 microns last or how often do you need to change the filters? It just so, depends on how filthy the water is. Yeah, that, <laughs> we, uh, we rate our filters at 2,000 gallons, uh, which in an RV setup, that's a long time. If you go out a couple times a year, that's at least a season. Um, it, but it does depend on the on the water. I mean, if you're filtering mud, it's going to be a lot less than that. If you're filtering very clean water, it'll last a very long time. Yep. Awesome. And that's how we know it's time to change ours. When our water pressure starts to drop. Yes, that's exactly right. We know it's time to go out and check our filters. And we, we actually just changed ours after we, God, we full-time guys. We, we should use admit our, how long it took us to yeah, change our we, filters. We used ours for almost six months. I we went out. for a long time. You know, um, <laughs> we're busy, right? But I finally get out there. I changed the filters and I was blown away by the sediment and the junk that mm -hmm. these filters picked up. They were dark color. So yeah. Yeah. it was nice yeah. to put new ones well, in. Well, good. There. They did their job. They yeah. worked. Oh, they yeah. worked. Um, we're getting a lot of questions on the on the UV, and I think I can answer a little bit of that as far as like the view, UV system. Sometimes they have a, a higher electric requirement, and I hear and correct me if I'm wrong that you kill all the microbes in there, but then you're drinking dead microbes. Is that kind of well? It, um, so it, it, let's, it let's talk about a UV system for for a minute. Yeah. I, I think I, I'd say a handful of things. Um, uh, first, they're fragile. Um, the UV is, is, um, the UV tube is glass and, uh, because an RV is a rolling earthquake, um, it, oh. it's not really a good mat mass. They, we, um, we found that they're, they're very fragile and the, and the tubes tend to break. And the other thing is that a UV system is only effective against organic contaminants. They do nothing for things like pesticides, heavy metals, Ooh. um, uh, in other, primarily the man-made toxins, uh, they don't do anything for those, and uh, they'll allow them to flow right through. And then speaking of flow, they they typically don't flow well. Um, in order to have the the UV light do its work, the water has to spend a certain amount of time underneath the UV light, and that means slowing down the water, which means slowing down your flow. 
Um, yep. Don't get me wrong. They're very good at killing organic contaminants. They, yep. They're great at it. Um, but that's, uh, but there are some trade-offs. Yep. There's um, always trade-offs. Yep. Isn't that yes. with everything in our being? Yeah. Like you're, there's you got to no give something thing. to get something. It, yeah. The yeah, sure. Not real. Yeah. And, and just so you know, we, we, we tried UV. We tried the other one that's located. The reverse osmosis. The reverse osmosis. That one was problematic. We, we had yeah. a lot of problems with that one. And so, and those can be fairly expensive. So guys, you guys know us. We, we try our stuff out before we ever suggest it. Um, and, uh, and, 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 and we look at everything. Yeah. We look at everything. I think, uh, so, uh, a couple questions on how much it costs. Well, we actually have a coupon code to, to help save you guys money on that. Um, I'll make sure uh, we put that in the chat. The other piece too is, um, is there like a meter for your RV filter? Like what if you buy a used RV? Um, there is a meter, um, actually our friend Jason, Jason oh. and Amy, there's a meeting where you can actually monitor how much water goes in. It's, it's, we'll oh, actually, yeah. uh, Jason sent me a link to it. We'll, we'll put it in our next video guys. Um, but you can meter how much water is going into yes. your RV. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's Great. awesome. Kenzie already put in the link so you guys can save 10% if you're interested. Perfect. Yeah. This is, this is awesome. There are a couple of other questions that, um, that we will try to get to in the comments. And um, yeah, we're we, going to let you go. I think I, at this point, I think it's just almost like we've learned so much that I really want to take this and implement the action of it. You know what I mean? Right. Like, cause there's a lot to go over here, but um, thank you so much for taking your time yeah. to, to dispel these myths. Cause that's a big thing. Like as a mom, you know, you think you're protecting your family, you're doing everything you can to make sure your family's okay. And to find out that the water you're, you're drinking. Yeah. 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 The water. Ugh, that's, that's a hard one. To, yeah. So you know. happy Memorial day, Stuart. Thanks for taking some time with us today and thanks for helping and educating our audience. Yeah. Yeah. You guys, thank you guys very much. This is very innovative and we appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Yep. Yeah. Have thank a great you weekend. All right, you too. All right. So, so guys, this has been amazing. And remember guys, this is free. Yeah. Mercedes and I have been working on this more Mercedes than me for the past two weeks, <laughs> getting ready for this one. Thank and you, the baby. funniest thing about these lives, this is our fourth one. We do one the last Saturday of every single month, yeah. right? So mark your calendars. At noon Eastern, mark your calendars. And um, we were going to plan on doing this for six months. The whole point of this is to help other people. New you people. guys know how, how we don't look at the money. We try to help as many people as we can. God's other kids and yeah. God takes care of us. Yeah. And that's how our experience, so the more people we help, the, the, the more successful we're getting. And, yeah. and, and, you know, we're, we're so blessed to live the lives that we do. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, and, and we're grateful to the RV odd squad members. We'll do anything we can for you guys. Um, and a, there's a lot of other RVers that charge money for these classes. We don't charge for these classes, guys. We do this to help other people. We really believe on a fundamental level that RV education should be free. It should be and, free. And, and that is the premise that we're operating under. And, and we we want to bring in more industry experts and, and give them an opportunity. Like if there's one thing you could tell people, what would you share with the world that could actually help them? To so, make a difference. So everyone, we are just beyond grateful that you've taken the time to spend time with us. Make sure you got the download. We're, we're also probably going to be doing like some emails um, in the in the future, like following up if you guys have any questions, because there were a lot of questions that we just weren't able to get to maybe they're a little particular or, you know, it's just a lot of information that we're trying to flow through. Yeah. We're not um, ending this. You sound like you're ending this. Oh, okay. No, we're going to take some more questions on personal stuff, guys. It doesn't okay. have to be about the water filter. We only do one live a month now. Okay. And so any questions you guys want to ask us, shoot. Like I do want to sound, I want to say hello to some Rick Davenport. Hey man, Van Gogh Nomad. God bless you as well. Yeah. Mark Krolik. Um, yeah, we love doing it. We love helping other people. We really do. When we started our YouTube channel, we had no idea it was going to turn into this. Yeah. We wanted to make a few extra bucks to pay for things as we traveled and we had no idea. Now it's our mission. Um, we believe we have a responsibility because we have this platform mm -hmm. to help as many people as we possibly can. And that's why we do this stuff. Yep. Um, thank you, Nicole, Nicole Higdon. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome, welcome to the RV odd squad. Happy to help. Now we have a question here from crypto specialist red street. Rick, I'm going to name some of these. This drives Mercedes crazy when I, I do this, but I love, and I want to, Rick Davenport, uh, um, uh, vacations in Florida, whoever you are, Aaron May, what's up, man? Pay it forward always. Highlander Mike Golf. My, Hi, Mikey's been with us for two years. He always makes fun of you. He is. And he, he's he, funny. He, he, Mike's funny. He's a good guy. He's a real <laughs> good guy. Um, uh, Red Street, Annie Pittman. Hey, 
uh, caught the end. Really great information. Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, guys, remember, you can go. This is going to be this live will be left up. You can go yeah. back and watch from the beginning mm -hmm. all the way through. We believe it, this is one of the most important videos we ever did have done because it, it literally could save somebody's lives. Yeah. Okay. So crypto specialist had a question. He said, I just got a camper from camping world on Thursday. Then I started watching y'all. How screwed am I? Uh, well, at least you got a name like crypto specialist. So you got that going. Do for you yet. pray? <laughs> no, it's just when it comes time for, for uh, repairs and that sort of thing, it's um, you have to be very, very active. And also uh, be careful with those extended warranties that they're gonna try to sell you. They're gonna try to Hope didn't buy them amortize all. them over 20 years. Right. Although the warranties only last for two, three, five, seven years. So be very, very careful with that. But in a general sense, um, you have to be very loud with them. And being part of the RV Odd Squad. But it makes no difference, sweetheart. Well, but being part of the RV Our experience Odds is we spent $15,000 on, um, on extended warranties and we canceled them all six months later because every time – we bring our, our brand new RV in to get fixed. Yeah. They wouldn't fix it. We pick it up two, late, two weeks later. Wasn't done. We did that three times, you guys. But but you guys have us now. So just include us in your emails and then watch. Like I, I've seen people do that that we've never met before. And we get these emails about these situations. We have no idea. But it's like, you know, the RV odd couples watching. <laughs> and you know we're crazy. We'll do a video on anything. Yeah, you better not mess with the RV odd squad. That's another great point, guys. Yeah. When you use our links to yeah. buy any of the products, and we don't sell a lot of products. You guys know this. Yeah. Um, but when you use our links, we got your back. You remember the RV Odd Squad. So these companies, we hold their feet to the fire. If there's oh, yeah. ever a problem with your product, um, just you'll get customer service. Don't Tell worry. me, remember the RV Odd Squad. Or, a, you know, uh, include, us in, include us in the email. Magic happens. And, and don't hide us. Make sure that they can see that the RV Odd Couple is in the email. Exactly. Which leads us to another question. Do you guys keep a battery backup bank with outlets in case of all power failure? If so what kind? Yeah, you definitely want to have a battery bank that you keep charged for emergency situations. Um, we're playing right now with the Blue, Blue Eddy, is it? Um, yeah. We're playing with a bunch of different ones to do a video on that. They have some that can be charged by solar. I mean, the stuff that's out there is crazy, but it yeah, is you can't guarantee that you'll have power even if you're at an RV park. Yeah. And again, we usually use stuff for a long time before we ever suggest that we get hundreds of companies reach out to us every single week offering us free products. But we never sell out. We, we always tell them we, we're going to do the video we want to do. A lot of them uh, want to approve the video before you launch it. We tell them no. That gets rid of most of them. Um, and so, you know, any you guys know, if we suggest a product, we've done our homework on it and we trust that they're going to take good care of you. Jackie has a really good question. I missed the first three classes. How can I access those? Love you guys. Well, I think it's um, if you're on our email list, if you got the download, um, you have to uh, just go back to the beginning of this list. video. Well, no, the, the first three videos, the one on the myths of oh, RV, they're in there. the purchase. So if you're, if you're, um, if you look on our community tab, but also I think we'll probably be doing an email, like giving everyone the links to everything. Um, because eventually, yeah, because we're, we're working on this, making a class, um, that's free. That's like, what's the first thing an RVer needs to know? Then what do you need to know? Then what do you need to know? Really trying to take you step by step. Yeah. And so just so you know, all four of the videos are still public. If you go through our channel and you look, you pull up live videos, you'll see them. Yeah. Quick. Thank you, Keith. Appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you, Keith. We got, we got a lot Terry of Terry Newell, Colin's friend one, uh, Gina Roberts. Hey, Gina, Linda Webster. Hey, G Hey, Linda. Oh, we had a quick Lauren, question. Georgia, quick Kelly question family question RV trips. On the reverse osmosis. Um, I answered that in the chat because we just briefly said there were problems with it but didn't explain what it was it takes up a lot of water so in a house when you use a reverse osmosis system it's not a big deal because you know you have plumbing but like in an rv for every gallon of water you filter there's like two or three gallons that don't get that that are junk that yeah. are waste and when you're living on your tanks those tanks can fill extremely fast all right and then we had a couple of other questions um Hey, Kelly family. One of them, Michelle, I have a TST. Is it is it not okay to monitor the back tires um, on the toe of the Jeep? No, monitor all the tires. Every tire, even if it's a spare. Monitor every single tire. Yep. You, you need to monitor. Just monitor everything. everything. Yep. yep. Sunny and, day. Oh, boy, school for dummies. It looks like you're in the perfect place. Then, <laughs> uh, Bo Brando. Uh, Herman Garcia. Oh, happy to help. Always love to help. Sue God bless a, you too. Sue had a question. How do you tell if the tires are symbol EFG? 
Isn't that on the tire? It's on the tire. That's the tire rating, guys. That's super, super important. Remember we talked about in the beginning of this video, when you buy an RV, you're going to look at the spec sticker. It's usually yellow or orange. Um, and it's going to tell you the specs in your RV and the weight that those tires are allowed to carry. If you overload that RV, which most people do, mm -hmm. then your, your rating better go up. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's very, it's so, it's so, so important to get the correct tires. I go higher, be safer than sorry. And then Gary asked, how much money is it to add a TPMS system and can I install it myself? Yeah. I could even install a TPMS system and that just says everything you need to know right yeah, there. Yeah, their customer <laughs> service rocks. TST's customer service is awesome. Yeah. Um, we've gotten tons of RV Odd Squad members uh, write us email saying they were great. Just call them up if you can't get it. It's pretty simple to do, but I actually had to have, I had, had, had I, I actually had to call customer service to get mine hooked up, but it took me two seconds. Yeah, they're awesome. Yeah. And they're an American company, which says, says it all right there. Um, okay, uh, Antonio asks, what's the oldest tire I should buy? Is, this could be tricky. Oof. It just depends on the make and the model, guys. Um, some people will tell you if, they, they, if you have a tire that's more than three or four years old, it's such, it, I would bring it to a tire professional and have them look at it. That's mm -hmm. what I would do. Yeah. That's Michelins can last longer than Goodyear. Uh, I would stay away from Chinese tires. Uh, they call them China bombs. Mm -hmm. If you got a Chinese tire, it's probably not a great tire, guys. Yeah. Good oh, point. Gina Roberts, thank you so much. I appreciate that. God bless you too. Yeah, really appreciate that. Yeah. And I think we missed one from Dawn. There's um, another one. Yeah, I, I might Let's have missed see. something. Okay. Oh, there it is. Sorry, Dawn. We didn't mean to. Hey, Dawn, 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 Dawn. Where is Beauty he? Beauty and the Beast. He's obviously. <laughs> I'm obviously the Beast. Yeah, so. and Dawn's <laughs> been with us since God. He's been. He 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 actually he supports us. He's one of our very few supporters. Um, who actually uh, uh, reached out to us and said, well, you don't have a Patreon, you don't have this, you don't have that. How can I support you? Yeah. And we gave him a way to, to support us. So he gives us, a, what, 10 grand a week now, I think it is, yeah, right, Dawn? Yeah, 100 yeah. grand no. for sure. No, thanks for your support, Dawn. We appreciate it. All right. Cookie um, D456, Ellis Wireman. Howdy, yeah, campers. Howdy. People are awesome. Three for the road. All right. What is happening in the property search? Well, we'll, we'll let our community know, again, Make sure you're getting the newsletter. If you logged in and got the course materials, you'll get it because there's certain things we're going to share like open to the public and then certain things we're going to keep to ourselves a yeah. little bit. And Bo Randall, um, it, do, do us a favor. Shoot us an email and tell us what you think of that Bluetti EB70. Yeah. Um, we've tested a couple of them out. Again, we don't just get a, a product and do a video to make mm -hmm. money. We, we got to make sure that the that the product works and the company is going to stand behind the, you know customer support so that the RV Odd Squad is satisfied. Shelly has a great question. I'm thinking seriously about installing a soft start on my roof AC. What say you guys? Here's what I say. You, you got to do it. If um, you yeah. The, the hardest thing was just like closing the clamp. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, honestly. And, and as soon as he taught me, which I didn't like him telling me what to do. I hate it when my husband tells me what to do, but he, he actually knew what he was talking about. A little. But, but you know, they have a specialist there that will walk you through it. Just make sure you have cell phone service so you can talk to the specialist. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. All right. Um, hey, RV Dog. RV Dog's always there in the comments every single week. Thanks for your support. Herman Garcia, God bless you too, buddy. Yeah, you guys are God awesome. God bless you too. All right. Lauren, Lauren Georgia, thank you, honey. Yeah, we got a comment on, on Laura for a second. Yeah, let's see what she's got. You know, she's just, I know you guys don't charge for this class. Um, you know, the value of this. Thank you so much. We, we appreciate that. And that's the thing that we believe is that just, just give and then everything is going to take care of it. Yeah. Give more than itself. you take. It's We're, a simple spiritual principle, guys. Bring more than you take. The world's, the world's got quite a few takers in, in, in it right now, but this, you know, there's got to be more of us. And that's why we always say that if you're an RV Odd Squad member, be kind, make people smile, mm -hmm. you know, always be courteous and, and be, always be willing to help somebody else. And what's really cool about helping people is even if you witness someone helping somebody else, it actually makes you happier. It makes you happier. Yep. You know, um, and so uh, we'd like to see more of that. Yep. And and you know what else, too? And you guys know this. We're in this for the long haul. Yeah. Like we want to build a community for the long haul. Wait so. till you guys hear what we're doing behind the scenes oh, for man. you guys we're right now. We're always doing stuff behind yeah. the scenes. We're like addicted yeah. to it. Yeah. We make about a quarter of what the other YouTubers in our space make. Um, but what we do is God gives us everything we need. So mm -hmm. our, our, our RVing experience, which we love, we love the lifestyle, is paid for. And then we're taking most of that money and the extra time we have and dumping it into how else we can help 
um, yep. the RV Odd Squad, because we're not the leaders of the RV Odd Squad. We're members of the RV Odd Squad, guys, exactly. right beside you. Exactly. And it's it's actually the RV Odd Squad who taught us how to RV. When you guys see a video, us do a video, take the time to read the comments below the video. And anything we miss, the RV Odd Squad will cover it. Amen. Our, our videos don't miss much if you read the comments. Yeah, yeah. We we always miss something. Thank you, Tinkerbell. We always, there's always something like, you know, you try so hard to get everything so perfect. And then somebody brings up an idea and you're like, how come I didn't think of that? <laughs> and that just actually, it makes us better. Yeah. Right? It yeah. makes us better. Welcome so. to the RV Odd Squad, Michael Pickle. Yeah, we are so. It's good to have you. Yeah. Oh, so, so Tinkerbell is from Ottawa, Canada. Oh, nice. We have a, an awesome Canadian uh, segment of the RV Odd Squad that like, <laughs> When we finally take the trip up We north, love our Canadians. They are so the good giving. people. Yeah. yeah, the good people. I love this. Yep. All right, so it looks like we are in pretty good shape. Um hopefully we answered everything. We're trying our best. We really are trying our best to acknowledge everyone right now. Where are you guys right now? We are in our daughter's house. Yeah. <laughs> That's all you need to know. Yeah, we're at my daughter Mackenzie and thank you to Mackenzie for oh helping gosh. us in this live stream. Oh my gosh, um, if you guys knew the amount of people that have sacrificed. Yeah, there's been like 12 this. people working mm -hmm. on this one thing, guys. Mm -hmm. And we do this stuff for free again, you know. We yep. we love helping and 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 we do get gifts in return, yeah. you know. Um, this is the best way. We just got to Colorado 10 days ago. We're super excited to be home. This is where Mercedes family is. This is where my family is. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we're going to be here for most of the summer. We'll be using this as a jumping off platform to go to probably Yosemite. We're going to do Utah trips. Mm -hmm. um, but we're going to stay close to family during this time of unrest. Yeah. Again, yeah. I told you that I'm a prepper. And so I want to be near my kids, yeah. our kids. And, and, and so that we can help each other. Um, things are just crazy. And I want to share a personal experience with you guys. Okay. We just got to a campground in Colorado. It's Cheyenne Mountain. Why are you it sits between uh, NORAD, which I didn't know. I thought it was NORAD when I started flying a drone and uh, didn't didn't turn out too good. Yeah, they didn't find me and put me in jail. I'm here. Don't fly here. a drone, fly a drone near no NORAD. <laughs> and on the other side, we're pinched between NORAD and um, Fort Carson. Fort Carson. And every single night at 10 o'clock, they play taps mm -hmm. and I get choked up mm -hmm. and I think about what a mess things are right now. Right. But and that we, gives you hope. it gives me hope though, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I can't even imagine that those who have served us and lost their lives and the family of those who've lost their mm -hmm. lives for freedom, for Liberty, for the constitution, for all of it, the, 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 the bill of rights. I, it, it makes me so sad that we're in the mess that we are in right now. But I do have faith that God's going to get us through all this. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and last night I heard it. We went to bed early because we knew we were getting this done. I walked out when I heard it and I actually put my hand over my heart and I just sent out love and respect to those who have sacrificed for the, for the country we have. We're so spoiled. We're so lucky. We're so lucky. We've become so selfish, you know, but hopefully we'll find our way home. Yeah. Marin, thank you so much. We appreciate what, you know, you being a part of this community. Y'all are the decision makers. You know, y'all don't have to be a part of our community, but you choose to. Yep. So thank you for that, because the most valuable thing you guys have is your time. And we appreciate that. We don't take that lightly. You're, you're here with us. You know, I've been Josie RV. <laughs> <laughs> thank um, you, man. Have a good trip. Maryland, Washington, any slow. recommendations? Go slow. And don't do what we did. Yeah, Dubai. don't speed. <laughs> Make sure you have good tires, have good water filtration. Yeah. You'd be blown away by the type of water that's out in the West Coast. Mm-hmm. And then uh, we love Mercedes and Jack. <laughs> yeah. Thanks again to my daughter for Mackenzie for doing the. Oh, she is like the, amazing. Yeah. Oh rocks. my gosh. She's like behind the scenes. We'll see. There's a lot happening. And, and then our son-in-law. Oh my God. He's a Marine. He's downstairs. He's been playing with Sage the whole time. Oh my gosh. And I think, I think that the Marines have, have properly equipped him for the <laughs> battle that he's undertaking right now. <laughs> God bless him. And that's the other blessing about being near family for us. We actually may have a break or two. Mercedes and I might be able to go out for dinner. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we might be able to have go on a, a date, have a babysitter. Oh my gosh. You now know, you're so. now you're talking. Now you're yeah, now it's you're gonna be a wonderful crazy. summer. Yeah, we're we're beyond we're beyond grateful. All right. So I think that I think we've acknowledged everyone. We're really trying our best. <laughs> we're trying our best so hard. <laughs> Um, we love Mercedes and Jack. Yeah. yeah. You know, we get that guys. We, we go to most of the RV campgrounds we go to now people recognize us, but they always remember Mercedes name and not mine. Like, Oh, hi Mercedes. And what was your name? Yeah. They don't know me. Yeah. Oh, quick, quick two questions. Um, the manufacturer sticker, says 115. 
the uh, Michelin website says 90. Uh, what should I use? That's a, that's a tricky one. Do yeah. I use the tire or do I use the manufacturer? I would let's email that one out. Let's yeah. find get some, get, we're, we're not professionals at so this we'll guys. That's why we brought the experts in. Do we'll your homework, you know, um, and we'll, uh, we'll uh, ask Mike if he can find out the answer. We'll find the answer out too. And, and then another one, the decal on my fifth wheel is very faded <laughs> and hard to read. Is there a way to find out what the pressure should be? Can you find that out on the tire? Um, yeah, it's, it's, it, it'll it, be on the tire. The information's always on okay. the tire. Um, Highland, Highlander, Mike Golf, keep the crayons away from the Marines. You hear that, Connor? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. No, you can't give him any, you can't he'll actually eat Highlander, it. Mike. <laughs> oh, no, his wife just <laughs> he'll said he'll eat the he'll crayon. Yeah. Eat so oh, you, you make a good point there, Mike. And Mike also served our country. Oh. I believe he's Army. Yeah, I, I don't remember. Yeah, I, don't I don't want remember. to disrespect. No, but I don't remember. Hey, North Carolina, Patrick Bradshaw. Thanks for coming today. Guys, we're going to wrap this up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Um, uh, have a blessed weekend and we'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys. Bye. It's too funny. Kenzie's like,